Hey, hey, hey. Is this live now? Alright. Wait. I should have, uh... You should see me, too. That'll make this more fun. How do you do that? Audio... Video capture device. That sounds about right. Hey. Alright. Sounds good. Put that down here. Alright. Yeah. Looks good. Let's do that. So, I hope you can hear me alright. And I'm going to do some programming on Alloverse. Let me show you first and foremost what I'm building. So it's VR. Um, we're building a platform for collaboration in VR. Uh, to meet and work and have fun and maybe even do like classrooms and education and stuff together in the Alloverse. Um, let me show you what that looks like right now. Yeah, I'm not good at not touching my face. Let's see if this works. Yeah, that works. So, I'm using a cool uh, engine called Lover. Window and actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna share this stream on the tweeters because I promised I'd do that. Let's see. It's my iPad for that. Um, hello. That's me. Here I am. Writing. Some Alloverse code tweet. Cool. Yeah, so I'm using lover.org. This is the uh, VR engine I'm using. It's pretty nice. Actually, it's super nice. Um, it's very easy to use. Like, you can write your hello world in three lines of code. It's Lua. Um, the underpinnings, the infrastructure of the thing itself is it's great. Um, it's very easy to work with. So this is Alivers right now. It's it's not fancy at all. So this is in desktop mode where it pretends to be in a VR headset but it's actually just um, you know showing the two eyes in a window. So what I can do here is I can turn on debug and connect to my server running here on localhost in uh, Linux on Windows. Kablamo! That crashes! Jeez, what? Huh, funny. Let's try that again. I've been doing this as my half-time actual day job for... What is it? Almost two weeks now, so yeah, I haven't gotten super far yet. So yeah, I think that's my root entity. Can I? Oh, this is my root entity. I think this is that's the the server has its own entity, and this is my avatar, which has the head and the hands as child entities. So yeah, let me boot up. An application in here, so you can see that what the Alloverse is actually about. Dev, hello place, um, source element still. Here we go. So I should be able to just run this. Oh, funny! Yeah. Okay. Wow. All right. Jeez. How, uh, how does this have so many bugs? Fixed a bunch of bugs recently. Okay, interesting. So I guess the first thing we'll be doing is just uh, 
I'll retry for the bug. I'm still not used to working on in Visual Studio. Retry. Okay. Yes. So we've decoded minus four. Interesting. Why would Opus decode return minus four? If a negative number is returned, then there has been an error. No shit, Sherlock. Let's see, error codes. You can't see the values in here. Jeez, why would you do that? Um, it over to we have here we go invalid packet hmm why would the packet be invalid hmm so we're parsing a packet from the channel so here's the um, mm, Allonet is a library for talking to the Alloverse. Whether you're an application or a vice or a server, so we use the same shared C library. Um, it uses Enet to split communication up over different channels. And this is where uh, new world representations come in. This is where RPC comes in and this is where media comes in and we have 120 bytes of media in here and I'm guessing this data does not have a track ID yeah okay so I'm running an outdated version of the protocol on my server there we go hey look at that Source Alanet is out of date. Who would have thought? Yeah, whatever. Pull. Get log. Update Linux recursive. New. Okay. So the server is an Elixir project, and Elixir projects work pretty well with CMake. So it just uses CMake to build the Alanet thing automatically. All I have to do is mix run and it'll compile my Elixir, my Erlang, and my C. Like it's not that. I recently added support for sending more than one audio track from a client. Um, I mean, I need to actually pull the server too. February 28th. That's a long time ago. So, say you have an application. Wait, what? Yeah, explicit audio track creation. Great. So, say you're building an application where you have two speakers in the world. Because really, stereo sound can't exist in one place. If you have stereo sound, you want them to come from two different places. So, say you're building a jukebox as an app to show in the Alloverse. You want to have left sound in one speaker and right sound in another speaker. It's probably going to be two audio streams. So, to have support for multiple audio streams, I had to prepend the incoming data with which track it it is on. So. Um, this new server says gives a track ID in the first field. Let's see if it works out. Hmm. Yeah, let's try. So here we are. Let's try a little C program. Oh! Maybe the C program is not up to date. And it's sending a dummy track ID. That could be it. So 
that works any better. There's no love in the I am a computer program. Yes, you Blue. are Blue. a I am a computer program. Computer program. Oh, and this server is currently I set to send uh, data at 2 Blue. hertz Blue. just so I can I am a computer program. Uh, debug my client side Blue. interpolation better. So Blue. the hand would previously Blue. move at 2 Blue. FPS and after this morning's program. work it now moves Blue. at Blue. See, 4 to 9 Blue. FPS. Blue. So that's I nice. am a computer program. I can show you what that looks like actually. If I go to network scene. I am a computer it's be program. right here. Blue. Go down to I call. And I remove Blue. the simulate line here. And this is lever, Blue. so I can just save and it will automatically refresh. And I can go back and reconnect. Blue. And now everything is in 2 FPS, including Blue. my hand. So, doing client side interpolation. It actually works! Hooray! Blue. Okay, so this app can stop saying bleep bloop now. Thank you. So, my. Hey, is anybody, is anybody in here? I'm gonna switch to some better music. I have three viewers, that's amazing. Go to where is my Unicorn's Intense Programming Music? There we go. All right. So what I did recently then was to take the physics, physics, the simulation code that I had in Elixir. Let's see if I can bring that up. Uh, right here this code looks at the intent of each client if the user is pushing forward on their joystick it will move that user forward uh, swipe on the right joystick it will rotate and then when you move your hands your hands should move in world to match the movement you did in in real life. So I took this code, I ported it over to C and Alonet and in state simulation and here is where it simulates this math, here is equivalent to this math, this math here is equivalent to this math. And that works great. So something I've been thinking for months that I want to do is in order to share the simulation between client and server, I'd like to run that always in C on both the client and the server. So I need to make this thing call this thing in C. And that sort of forces me to move my entire store of um, world representation into C because I guess I could copy it back and forth like crazy but I'm not gonna do that so what and uh, the way Erlang and Elixir works is that instead of having classes as your main boundary between things you have agents so they're sort of like processes, like actual, actual separate um, programs, executables that communicate with message passing. So this Play Store module here is already a server of a sort that implements this API right here. So in theory, I could make a new Play Store that implements this API but actually calls it to C to implement it and the, the server application won't notice a difference that's pretty cool so is that the way I'm gonna do it? hmm I guess so I guess why not I'm gonna have a look here in the server. So, 
so the server state is client yeah the server state doesn't know anything about the entities hmm Talks to the Play Store. It doesn't even spawn it, it uses a global store. So I just put another Play Store in there. That should just work. But I also want to take the simulation code out of here, but one step at a time. Okay. If you're watching, do you want to type in the chat? kind of quiet in here. Curious who the hell is looking at me ranting about code. Really curious actually. Would love to hear from you. Hmm. Okay. Alright. I can do that. So... <laughs> well, hello! Nord Sensei. Well, who, who, who are you? Hello, who are you, Fnord Sensei? Fnord. Do I know who Nick Fnord? Uh, nice seeing you too. Do I have a chat widget? Can you see the chat box here? It's not really showing up in the stream, is it? Well, you can see the chat, so that's fine. Yes, please remind me who you are. Sorry. I'm not mapping Nyx in my head right now. Um, let's see. So, Fnord, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new library. Or a new executable. It's in source. So we already do this daemon thing. Um, for our network, because the you know, I showed you this uh, client this Alonet library is already a C, C program that this Elixir application is able to talk to and it's talking to it through this daemon here. So this is that application, it's not very big. It just forwards I mean, it's kind of big for what it does. It takes an Erlang term and then converts that over to a C call and then sends the response back as another term, which is like message passing. Um, so let's rename this to net because it's doing the net work abstraction. I actually want two daemons because one of the advantages of Elixir and Erlang is that it's very um, redundant or it has a redundancy approach to error handling so if something breaks it kills that process and starts up a new one and just sends the same message again and see if that works and that way the whole server as a whole can keep working and just try again and if that fails disconnect the user or whatever but in many cases it doesn't even have to disconnect anyone okay cool well nice seeing you uh, Oscar's friend and glad to have you on stream So, let's see. Oh, Henrik! Well, hello. Right, yes, okay. Now, now I remember. Great. Um, okay, so, what was I saying? 
So what I want to do is have the storage of the world in one process and the network in one process so that uh, if some stupid user sends some really broken data in a way that crashes the network code that should only bring down the network and we still have the world representation alive and functioning so uh, I don't have to like serialize that and bring that up for it to so, you know it's not a, a single user can't bring down the world so that's why I want two processes so I'm gonna do that let's see how do I do that new file network and this is state store world state state dot c okay I'm gonna steal this code right here um not the prettiest code but it'll work for what we're doing let's see we don't need the callbacks we don't need any callbacks do we I don't think so uh, we're not gonna listen Touch closure, but I have touched Rust. Touched Rust, and actually, uh, we're thinking of um, replacing this e library with Rust when we're like, I hate C now. Can't take this anymore. And this is a house of cards because hey, all of this stuff. We're we're still trying to figure out how to build this thing. All of us. Um, um, we haven't built game code in a while. Or sort of rusty, so stuff is sort of just mashed together. Uh, we keep improving on it, but at some point, this code is just going to be a house of cards, and that's when we replace it. And we want to replace this whole library, uh, this whole library, with Rust, because Rust is nice and has very strong and reliable typing. But not yet. Okay, so blah blah blah. blah. Let's see what's this handle follow. We don't need that because we're not gonna do that anymore. Okay, so here's a small process that. listens to Erlang we actually use file descriptors to talk between the processes um, so we need to check this uh, file uh, what am I doing here I'm trying to explain what I'm doing and I'm failing okay so yeah the file descriptor is set to non-block and then we need to know if there's data on it so we're actually selecting on it in a while one okay that makes sense but we're not doing hello socket so this is because the other process the network one it has two sockets it needs to manage uh, the UDP one for all the clients that come in and the communication with the other process and it has to interleave these so that uh, you know it's listening to both and it's only doing work when either has data but here we only have one we don't really need to make this asynchronous this could be synchronous but um, we shouldn't have a surf so we take this out we take this out and we take this out and this is just a lot of code to do nothing but whatever I just want to get something working for now oh wait no, okay wait. Uh, geez. 
yeah so uh, Henrik is saying that uh, immutability of rust is nice and that's why I like Erlang as well it's super immutable and it's my least favorite thing about elixir it takes away takes out some of the immutability and may, makes you think uh, in a mutable way again but it's really really great to try to construct applications out of immutable sets of data it, it's just a whole categories of bugs just go away so I really like that and if closure does that too I should maybe learn closure not right now okay so this application doesn't do anything yet why do I have these in here Jeez. but we need to be able to compile it so we're gonna compile it so we should have a CMake list in here it will have oh no one executable called project name yeah the memory model of rust is awesome but it's also a pain in the ass really Jesus it takes a lot of work to write to learn to think like that uh, once you do it's great but I guess it's sort of like learning Lisp it's incredibly powerful but it will take you a while to get there I want to get there we'll see when I get there okay so this project is called Alanet Fort that makes sense um, so let's make another one of these this let's let's be clear about what we're using where so we're actually using why would we have header files in sources whatever okay source slash l com c source slash net.c that's the sources actually we're going to need to glob that so we can take the glob right out and let's call this hello net port this is hello c bridge Then we're just going to create another executable. Oh, I need that more. Call allo state port. Yeah. Well, I'm going to change this. It's going to break in. Yeah, I'm going to change it. Net port, state port. Great. I'm going to do net and state.c. Looking good. Can I build this? What happened when I press build? Hmm. Failure is what happened. Valid argument where of what to who. Let's see, so CMake regenerated this cache. Mm -hmm -hmm. And then, line 21, number to string, what the hell? What does that even mean? What? Uh, could not open file for write in copy operation. Da what? Uh, so I think it's not built by this project. No. Okay, something's just severely broken. So Linux on Windows is fun. Um, it's also completely broken. 
if you touch a file from the Windows side of things and the Linux side of things at the same time, your file system actually gets sort of corrupted and the files become undeletable until I think you need to reboot. I don't know if that even helped. I think it sets some sort of NTFS flag on it and you're like screwed. Um, so I'm gonna... Oh yes, you can see I have VS build like 3 in here because I've been coding on this for a while and we're doing the same mistake. Okay, the flag is gone. I can actually delete the files now. So I'm gonna remake the CMake stuff for this. Wait, this is the wrong project. Yeah, I need to go over here. Okay, we can stop client right now. You don't need to see that hand moving. But if I make a build, oh. All right, let's see what CMake says about our new Allo State port target. Six viewers. Oh, and Avocade followed me. Whoa! Okay. Cannot specify link libraries for. Okay, yes, of course, yes. Faka. There we go. Hey, Fnord followed me too. Hooray! That brings me up to what? Like seven. Fo I have 16 followers? Jeez. Okay, well, it's uh, no problem. Nah, honestly, I, I appreciate you following me. Um, okay, so we have our state port. We could actually talk to this now. It doesn't do anything. But maybe we should implement it doing something. So what is it supposed to be doing? It's supposed to be implementing this API. We want to be able to add entities, remove entities, remove entities owned by, update entity, with a closure, not doing that, find entity, that's fine, get snapshot, get owner ID, this, this is the full API. Hmm. Who uses the callback version of update entity? I hope it's only the world simulation. It is! We don't need it because this world simulation is getting kicked out into C anyway. So actually what we can do is we just take all of this oh that felt good um simulate the world to broadcast new states okay equals place store dot simulate yeah I like it we're doing everything at the same time anyway. Fine. 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 Um, okay. So, I guess we're creating a remote Play Store or Daemon Play Store. Play Store MM, maybe. I create files. Right. Play Store Daemon. Um, should I call it? This the remote plate, but it's not remote. It's not. It's external. Um, Play Store. Wait, do I need a file for it? I don't might. I might not actually need. A, I. I can just create another process and stick it in server, and then delete this code. Might actually work. That's crazy. Um, uh, just 
guess. Um, simulate. That's what I call it, right? Yeah. Plain server dot call server. Oh, why why do I use I'm using callbacks for this? Nobody's doing find entity. No? Okay, fine. Take that out too. So all we do is add, remove, remove owned by. How did this code know who owns it? Jeez. It knew it because in this code, and has an owner. Huh. Okay. Component and owner. Okay. I'm gonna have to add that on the C side too. Because on the client side, it doesn't know who owns the entities. It probably should know at some point, but I've not exposed it because I haven't needed it. Hmm. Okay. Alright. So, uh, what I was thinking was... So, let's have a look at the other daemon. It's this thing here. It is a process. Okay, um, family's coming home. I gotta stop talking. It was nice coding with you. Let's try it again when there's less noise.